Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur and today we are going to be talking about server settings. Now this is part of my big series that I have running where I'm showing people how to run servers, how to play with friends, how to run dedicated servers, all that kind of stuff. Single player, non-dedicated, talking about all the options, talking about some of the common problems. It's going to be a huge series so make sure you check the playlist out if you're looking for something specific in there. Uh, if they're not there yet, trust me, I'm working on a bunch of these. It's going to be eight nine videos. I have no idea how many they're going to be. Um, and as you guys add comments down below, I will check those and they'll let me know where I need to go, what I need to change and how I need to adapt it. Um, so make sure you check that out. And if this video is not the right one for you, make sure you check down there. Maybe the right one is already down there. Uh, as I said, this is what I'm trying to do is trying to break it out into multiple videos. So let's go ahead and get to the video really quick. Uh, now, this works for most of the solo player worlds and anything you're going to do with an Xbox, PS4. Uh, for PC specifically, you can go into INIs and change more of this, but we're going to cover the menu rules, what each one of them means, what each one of them does. I've done many videos like this before, uh, but this one's going to cover every single one on the, set, the settings and tell you what they do. So starting over here on the general page, starting under arc rules, we're going to hit the first one. The first is difficulty level. Difficulty level standard is one, uh, but basically as you increase it, it will affect the amount of levels that creatures are in the world, uh, depending on the quality of the loot drop. So basically if you put this to two uh, on the island, you would have up to 240 dinos, uh, level 240, as you were, level 280 dinos, it would double the difficulty rate on there. Next is going to be dino damage. Dino damage is basically how much damage dinos do. Player damage is how much player damage do. Structure damage tells you how much structures will deal with their attacks. So like spiked walls, things like that, uh, turrets. Uh, player resistance is how much resistance you get your damage. Dino resistance, same thing. Structure resistance is the exact same thing, but for structures. So how much resistance they have to taking damage. Uh, next is gonna be XP multiplier. This just multiplies how much XP you get. Tame speeds how fast you can tame dinos base is one structure damage repair cooldown uh, if you decrease it I should also be clear for all of these first ones the numbers go up it's going to increase it so if your dino damage goes up you're going to do more damage with your dinos if you increase the resistance you're going to increase how much damage it can take the same thing with XP multiplier the more higher it is the more you gain taming speed that one's a little bit backwards. The higher it goes, the faster it tames. So there's less time for taming. So if you have it at 20, it's gonna be, taming's gonna take less time than if it's at one. Structure bear cooldown is how long, uh, this is in seconds. Um, uh, how long before you can repair the same structure again. Uh, turret damage, this is dino turret damage. So this is how much damage turrets deal to dinos themselves specifically. Dino harvesting damage is how much uh, damage a, a, a dino does to a specific item. So increase the amount harvest or how fast they dig, big, uh, bury through in a specific item. So like a metal node, the higher this is, the faster you'll just get that metal node instead of taking two shots, it might only take one. Harvest amount is how much you get from each harvest. Player, character, water, and food drain are the same. Basically, as you decrease the number, it means you're going to lose food slower and water slower. Uh, so basically, as you're running around and doing things, your food and water will decrease less. Same with food drain. Uh, for dinos, uh, normally people will increase the food drain for dinos because the more they eat, the faster they heal. Uh, stamina drain, exact same thing. The lower it is, the less the stamina drains on the specific person. Player character health recoveries, how fast you recover health, same with the dino. Player harvesting damage is when you're using a pick and you're going into something, how much damage you do to that tree or item. Uh, dino count is how many dinos you can actually have in the game uh, and spawned within the entire game. Not how many you can have, but how many are spawned on the map at a specific time. Um, this is your to hosting tether. On PS4 and uh, Xbox, you will not see this option. Uh, this is only for PC on here, but basically you can increase your tether range. Uh, understand though, the higher the range, the harder the uh, pull on your server is going to be. The next option is a checkable option. This allows you to put third person camera on uh, if you have it checked. Uh, enabling means you have it on. So by clicking it, it's going to turn on that everyone in voice chat for enable 
global voice chat will turn on it to where everyone can hear the exact same voice chat throughout the entire map you're playing on. Proximity text means you can only text within a certain range of each other. Uh, left not and join notifications means when someone leaves or joins, it will notify everybody in the world. Um, admin logging basically says when someone types in a command, so they type in like, let's say cheat fly or enable cheats, it's going to publish to everybody where they see it as a server message. Uh, so everyone will see those admin logs coming up. Enabling crosshairs means you can turn on crosshairs or have them off. It's up to you, but it allows you to display it on the HUD. You can force people not to have a HUD. Uh, if you want, if you click this one, you can turn off loot crates, hardcore mode you can turn on. That basically means if you die, you go to level one. PVE mode means you disable PVP and you only can do PVE so you can't kill other people uh, but you can disable friendly fire so if you have it turned on uh, if you check it it means that people you cannot hurt people in your tribe if you have it off that means you can hurt people in your tribe on PVE mode and PVP uh, show map lo player location just shows you are on the map on, on your map when you pull it up with the M button no tribe download, tribute downloads, no survivor downloads, no item downloads, no dino downloads is basically if you're trying to share, it depends on if you're doing a cluster or not. So since we're doing these normally by themselves, now, however, if you're switching maps, you may want to do downloads, uh, enable them briefly. Uh, this only stops downloads. This does not stop uploads, just as a note for you. Uh, so you can see no tributes are, you can't upload, um, things into the tribute thing you can't do your survivors you can't do items uh you can't do dinos uh, would be the last one here so you can't download dino specifically or you could just do everything in one shot uh and click it there from that one um and this is downloading just to be clear not uploading so you can do, not download from external sources uh naval pbp gamma uh that's just basically means you can type in slash gamma five or whatever and it lets you uh see at night better uh use single player settings means it's going to change uh the stats based on how many people are in the game um better dinos worse dinos better harvesting rates worse harvesting rates higher numbers all kinds of fun stuff corpse locator gives you a green beam where your body is if you die disable structure placement collision basically means you can put like uh, parts of um uh, foundations walls and those kind of things into the terrain itself um if uh, you don't have this on, then basically when you go to hit a rock or something, it just won't let you place it. Just as a note, uh, allow multiple fl uh, f uh, fl platform floors means on like saddles uh, and um, uh, platform saddles specifically. Uh, you can put two layers on it. Normally you can only do one. This one will probably put like two, three layers if you choose to. Unlimited respects means you can respect as many times as you want per level instead of every level only respecting one time uh disable dino taming is you basically can't do dinos you can't tame them you can disable dino riding um you can have creative mode left as an option for people and the last one is allowing flowers flyer speed leveling so it just basically allows you to go back to classic flyers uh before they take away all the speed increases that's going to cover general here uh, we're going to move on to advanced this one's going to get a little bit more technical uh so stick with me on these ones up here, we've got the PVE timer. Um, this is allowing you to switch uh, PVE and PVP mode at pre-specified times in the game. Um, if you select it, uh, you can't really do much. Uh, you have to kind of say, I want to switch it at real world times, um, but you don't have an option to actually place them in here. That's something you would have to place within uh, the I and I is just as a note for you uh, on this one. Uh, preventing tribe alliances means no one can ally uh, within tribe to tribe. You can allow tribe wars in PVE. You can allow tribe war cancels. Uh, you can disable PVE gamma if you choose to. Basically the same thing. You can turn on and off your gamma. Allowing cave building in PVE. A lot of times people don't like having cave building. It's different for PVP because obviously you can attack them and get to what you need to get to. Uh, but if you have it um allowed in pve you can't get through because you can't attack the base uh pve flower carry that basically means you can grab um other dinos and players when you're mounted in pve normally you can't do that just as a note uh, enabling structure uh prevention volumes basically means you uh limit where people can't build most specifically this is for the island so like uh, up on the top of volcano and high 
resource areas they prevent you from building there. Uh, disabling just structure decay in PvE basically means just uh, you're going to get rid of the gradual decay of player structures over seven days. This is dino decay, same thing. Um, this is the decay period. So you can see here it's a standard of seven days. At one, it will be uh, seven days. And every, if you go to two, it's 14 days and so on and so forth. So as you increase the number, it makes it take longer for the period. Same thing with the PvE uh, dino decay. As you increase the numbers, it's going to increase the amount of time. Uh, and then this is the auto PVE start time. So basically this is choosing when the timer is allowed in seconds. So when you have it on, it'll tell you how long people have to switch to the PVE settings. Um, that's a PVE stop time. So uh, we'll switch to PVE settings if a lot of PVE timer is on. Then you have prevent diseases. So basically right here, you've got this, you can click this and there's no diseases. You can prevent all permanent diseases. You can force allow cave flyers if you want to on here. PVP dino decay if you want to go ahead um, and prevent them from decaying if you have online prevention on, offline online rating prevention on, overriding structure platform prevention. Um, this is turrets and spikes can be built around the operation of platform saddles. Uh, you've got the increased PvP respawn interval, so basically the more times you die, the longer it takes to respawn. Offline rating protection, this is where you can go ahead and see that. You can click that, uh, and it'll turn it on or off. Uh, this is this period right here tells you how long it's going to take, so higher the number, the longer it's going to take after you log off for offline raid protection to uh, go on. Some people like this a little bit longer, um, just because you don't want it to be like, oh, I'm getting ready, let me log off really quick. Uh, you kind of want to make it where uh, there's an option where you know people can't just log off and call it quits and, and not let anyone in there um, next is going to be the PvP respawn interval check period uh, so basically this is a period in which dying to the same team again will trigger an internal PvP respawn multiplier so basically by dying over and over you can kind of say hey you know you can't kill this guy for a little bit kind of thing um, you know, and this is the same successive deaths to the same PvP. Um, we'll just keep increasing your time for more and more on all of these. Next is your PvP zone structure damage. This affects the damage taken by structures inside caves. I like to jack this one all the way the hell up because uh, I hate people being in caves. Uh, I feel like it's a chicken's way out for PvP. Honestly, unofficial, that's the standard, is building in a cave. Um, but, you know, it's no fun. Uh, and so that's why people do it, though, is because it's a way to prevent people from getting in your base. Uh, so that's why it makes sense. Structure prevention resource radius multiply. That one's crazy. Uh, basically, it's pretty simply uh, if you put a structure down, how close uh, will it be to have uh, resources spawning near it? So lower the number, the closer the uh, resources will be spawned to the base. The higher the number, the further away it will be. Uh, next are your world settings. So you can dis disable imprint dino buffs. So basically makes imprinting obsolete if you want it to. This is uh, allowing every anyone to uh, imprint on babies and cuddle. So basically it's uh, just so that one person doesn't breed a dino and then you have to sit there and constantly, and constantly go ahead um, and breed and tame the same dino over and over. Uh, poop interval just decides how many times a as the numbers increase, um, uh, how frequently the character can poop so basically clearly the number as the number increases you have you, you have more of a chance of pooping um laying egg interval is a percentage of the time between egg spawns being laid uh so increases the time between egg spawns being laid so uh you lay more eggs if you go to a lower number uh, mating interval is how long it takes for uh, mating to happen so if you increase the number it's going to make it longer if you decrease the number it's going to make it shorter between each time you mate your dinos hatch speed higher the number the faster the eggs hatch lower the number lower the eggs hatch baby mature speed higher the number the faster the babies mature lower the number the slower the babies mature baby food consumption speed this increases um, if you increase the number it tells you how fast the babies are going to eat food lower the number the lower the slower they eat food on there harvest health is actually how much health rocks and trees and things of that nature have so higher health means there's more in there however it's going to take longer to do unless you uh, increase your harvest damage on top of it so that's another fun note in there 
Um, that's tied into general from the first one. Resource respawn period, that's how long it takes for resources to respawn. Higher the number, the longer it takes them to respawn. Lower the number, the lower it takes them to respawn. Baby cuddle interval multiplier. Uh, basically this one is how long between cuddles they happen. Uh, so if you increase your mature speed, you have to decrease your cuddle interval multiplier to make sure that it fits. I've done a full video on trying to figure this one out for, uh, for you uh, to explain how you can make it to where you can 100% imprint almost every dino. Um, just understand that if you're trying to keep your imprints on here, uh, and if you make your mature timer too high, some of those faster dinos to breed uh, will not have a chance to interval and you could never get them uh, with imprints on them just as a note. So you need to decrease the interval multiplier, but by decreasing it, you're going to increase the number of uh, cuddles you're going to do too. So just as a note, uh, the cuddle grace period is just how long you have before the cuddle goes away. Uh, cuddle loss imprint quality speed multiplied, same thing. Longer it takes, the higher the number, the more time you have to uh, get to your baby and imprint it. Uh, stat scale multiplier, this tells you once you've imprinted it, um, how much better the dino is compared to what it was. One means it's just the standard and then 1.25 is kind of the standard cycle there. Uh, day and day cycle speed. So this is how long a full day takes. So day and night, how fast that goes by. Daytime speed um, is how fast it goes by just for the daytime. Um, the lower this number, just to be clear, means it will go slower. So if you want your days to go slower, your daytime to go slower, you decrease this number. If you want it to go faster, you go up. So your nighttime speed is how fast your night goes by. Next is your spoiling time. This is just internal spoiler for multiply for items um, that influences all items. So this is everything. Uh, every type of item will be affected by the spoiling time. Next is item decomposition. So this is how long items that you dropped survive. The higher the number, the longer it takes. Uh, corpse decomp time, same thing. Higher the number, longer it takes for your corpse to go away. Uh, no resource radius respawn um, distance. So this tells you how far. Uh, I think I may have possibly misspoken up here. This is how fast it respawns. So this one was about, um, if we go back up, we have kind of the same idea here. So it's structure prevention, resource radius, multiplier, and then down here is structures radius for resources. So basically one is just the base number and the second one is how much it multiplies out to make it to where they can grow closer and closer and closer. So um, this is for players, this is for structures of how far you have to be away for uh, resources to respawn. Uh, crop growth speeds, how fast your crops grow. Crop decay, decay speed, same thing, how fast your crops go away. Um, now we're gonna get to stats per level. I'm going to describe the overall section, um, but I'll go ahead and describe what each one of these is first. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about each substat and how it affects each thing. So health is obviously the higher it goes. All these are the higher it goes, the higher the multipliers as you decrease it, the lower the, the number would be. So if you go this up to four, you're gonna have four times the health. If you go down to 0.5, it's gonna have half the health that normally would per level. Uh, but as I said, we're gonna explain this top section in a minute. Stamina, same thing. Torpidity is the same thing. So how much torpe, torp, torpidity it has when it's wild. Uh, oxygen, how much oxygen, food, water, temperature. Uh, so weight, damage, speed, and temperature, fortitude. So this is just your fortitude is really what it is. So that's each one. Each one's gonna have these stats, um, uh, including the player stats, but we're gonna talk about what each one of these top things means. So this is wild dino stats per level. So when you go out and you're looking at a dino and you're looking at its level 150, that dino is gonna have stats given to it per level and that's this is what this is talking about. So if you're increasing this, it's increasing the stats at the per level stats for that dino that's just wild. So this is pre-tame, pre-everything, that's the stats that it's gonna have per level. Next is dino stats per level tamed. So when we talk about having perfect tames and stuff like that, we increase it by 74 levels. These are those 74 levels we're talking about right here. Um, these are the stats that you increase per level that it's tamed, um, not just the wild tamed. Now, tame dinos add per level is when after you've tamed it, after you've gotten the add, um, the initial add for those first 74 levels, the tame stats per level, this is when you click the button and you click it, this is what it's going to increase. Uh, infinity is basically when uh, they already have 
it's a multiplier for I'm trying to describe this the best way possible. This is so this is the tame stats per level. This is the multiplier so you can increase more per levels that you want it when you do the taming effectiveness. So the higher taming effectiveness, the better this is. This is the base stat add per level from the taming effectiveness. So uh, basically, let's just go ahead and do this really quick. Let's say you have a level four dino, you tame it as a perfect tame, you gain two levels, uh, and basically it goes to level six. This is the base amount it's going to get, whether you have a 0% tame or a 100% tame, no matter what, these are the levels it's going to get. However, the affinity is what the multiplier is for how good it is on taming effectiveness. So if you have 100% taming effectiveness, you get this full. If it's 50%, you get half of this. So this is the change for that specific part. Next is player stats per level. So as you increase and click a button for health, stamina, or anything, this is what you get when you click that level. Uh, that level. This is experience multiplier. So here is where it tells you what your multipliers are for each individual item. So maybe you want to have it where if you get more experience for kills, less for harvesting, something of that nature. This is where you can specifically draw it out. Your XP multiplier on the general side will cover all of these uh, without question. It's just your straight, whenever you gain experience, you get it times four, times eight, times 10. This is specific. So this one's going to give you uh, how much your just standard generic growth of multipliers. So being in a tech sleeping pod or something of that nature, uh, then you've got, um, this is under special. So this is kind of your multipliers here. Um, so like when you grab a node or something of that nature, a, uh, uh, explore a note or something of that nature. That's that one. Kill is killing a dino. Harvesting is harvesting something. Crafting is crafting something. Uh, and this will change those as you increase the numbers, the higher the XP is. Next is the miscellaneous settings. Uh, max players per tribe. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's how many players uh, you want it at zero if you don't want to cap it. Max player experience points. Um, you can cap out how many experience people can get dino max experience same thing flyer platform unaligned basing that one sounds fun but basically all it's talking about is can someone who is not in your tribe stand on your platform that's it um <laughs> that's, that's that's simply it passive defense hurt riderless dinos so basically spiked walls and stuff if a wild dino walks into them or riderless dino it will hurt them uh, if you don't have it on, it doesn't do that. Uh, only allow specified engrams, so you can choose which engrams uh, in this engram list, uh, and that's by clicking that, it will enable that one for you. Show floating damage text. This just basically has it where it pops up the damage when you do it, so you can kind of pay attention to that. Allow custom recipes means you can create custom recipes within the cooking pot in the industrial cooker. Allowing raid dino feeding basically means when you tame one of those raid dinos, so uh, this would be titans, this would be uh, titanosaurs, those kind of things, you can feed them and they can stay yours forever. Raid dino food drain multiplies how fast the raid dino's food goes away before you know it's no longer yours. Custom uh, recipe custom uh, custom recipe effectiveness is how good your custom recipes are. Skill factor is how much your uh, character gets from uh, crafting speed into your recipes that you create. Uh, so this would be specifically if you are trying to um, use crafting speed to do armor or something like that. This is how much that multiplies. Um, that's the one below. This is for the custom recipes. I apologize uh, for your recipes, uh, your food recipes. So this just tells you how much your crafting feed uh, affects that. Uh, the next one down below is what I was just saying. So this is when you craft something with crafting speed or crafting skill, I apologize. Uh, it will make it so that you have better armor and it'll increase the amount of how good it is based on how many points you've put into crafting skill. Uh, you can turn it completely off if you wish to. Supply crate loot quality. This is how good the supply crates are. Uh, increasing the number means it increases the quality of it. Fishing loot quality, same thing. As you increase it, better fishing loot. Fuel consumption rate interval multiplier uh, basically the fuel consumption interval multiplier as this number goes up it tells you how fast how much fuel is consumed as it goes down how slow fuel is consumed just as a note uh increasing platform structure limit this just basically means for like um all the different dinos and things like that or not dinos uh for dino platforms for Boats, rafts, those kind of things. This, as you increase this limit, it allows you to put more on those boats uh, by the multiplier. So, you know, if there's 74 on a wood raft, you have to times three. It gets you up to about, you know, 120 
120 or no 132 roughly would be three times on this one activate event so this is where you can activate your event in your single player worlds your don dedicators and stuff like that if you find out if you find the link for the event you can go ahead do the little dash in there and do all that kind of fun stuff on there and it'll go in there and place the activate event you just got to put the name in there and it's up and running um, other than that, that is the full statistics on this page uh, for Xbox, PS4, and if you just want the simple version for a PC without going to the INIs. Um, this is part two of the whole server settings that I've been doing um, and everything of that nature, so I'm super excited to continue doing these. Uh, part one goes over all the other stuff. Next one, we're going to be going into how to host dedicated servers through ASM, Xbox, all that kind of fun stuff, uh, and we'll, this will be continuing to be added on to uh, and continue to expand. So if you like it, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments down below if there's something more you want to see with settings or within server settings and all that kind of stuff. As I said, there's about seven parts to this whole thing that we're going to be doing, so I hope you're excited. Uh, and we'll see you next time of Liam's Corner.